Abdullah. Henrik Bornstrom centers back. Yoni rolled down low, bouncing around. Bornstrom after it. In front. They score! They score! Mike Vecchione! The Bears have done it! They are Calder Cup champions! The circumstances, the drama, the history, the call. Mike Vecchione's Game 7 sudden death overtime winner on the road at Coachella Valley Wednesday night can now be considered one of the single greatest moments in Hershey Bears history. Welcome into this special Bears Calder Cup frenzy a moment no American Hockey League team has ever experienced, Andrew, a sudden death overtime winner in Game 7, and it delivers Calder Cup number 12 to the Hershey Bears. Sweeter by the dozen, the call by the <laughs> voice of the Bears, Zach Fish. I love it. The cup back in its rightful home in Chocolate Town, USA. And yes, Coachella Valley, we keep our <laughs> Reese's and we take the cup as well. Now, we could easily fill an hour or two with all the incredible moments from this championship season, but let's do it chronologically and start with opening night way back in mid October. <laughs> Perhaps fitting, the season begins with the red carpet treatment. Fans of the chocolate and white welcome this year's team to Giant Center. It also happens to be the night Mike Vecchioni starts the roar. Another good sign of things to come. Three-time Calder Cup champ Chris Bork watches as his number 17 rises to the rafters. A member of the last Calder Cup championship team now presides over every game in Chocolate Town. It could have been a low moment. The Bears are shut out in their own teddy bear toss night. Once the animals begin to fly, another world record is the story. 67,309 stuffed animals distributed to 35 different local charities. Puck is down, we're underway. The Bears are the Marlies. Fox 43's first road trip for three broadcasts takes place in late March into early April. North of the border in Toronto as the Bears handle the Marlies and then back in the States for two dominant performances against the Cleveland Monsters. While we're in Toronto, more good karma as the Bears donate an old championship trophy to the Hockey Hall of Fame. We've got the Henry Fontaine trophy, which is arguably the oldest trophy in minor pro hockey history. And to add it to our collection today, we're thrilled. It's a two for one special at the hall. The skates Ethan Frank uses to clock the fastest lap in AHL or NHL history are also now on display. Good thing he keeps his stick because Frank puts on a show in the regular season finale to reach 30 goals for the year. After 72 games, we move to the playoffs. Bears, courtesy of their second place finish in the Atlantic in a first round bye after nearly a two week playoff layoff. The Bears face Charlotte in a five game series. Hershey as the higher seed. It's weird, they start on the road. If you are concerned about rust, no worries. The Bears bite the checkers five to two in game one with five different goal scorers. Game two, much more of the same. This one, a 5-1 tally. And the Bears return to the den riding high with nine different goal scorers through two games. Hershey then drops game three at home with a little bit of sloppy play. So we go to game four and the Bears go down 2-0 in the first period. Uh-oh, I sense a little theme there. In the second, Hershey comes out ready to play. Beck Malenstein, Beck to check as he is known, sets the tone and knocks the glass out at Giant Center and the Bears proceed to knock out Charlotte. Mason Morelli gets it going, followed by Malenstein and Alexi Protus. Nets the game winner and an extra tally before Riley Sutter and Captain Dylan McElrath seals the 6-2 victory and the series. Next up, Hartford and the Bears down 2-0 in the third period of game one. The comeback is on. Logan Day finally nets one. Then Connor McMichael redirects a shot home from Jake Massey. The spark of this run, Henrik Borgstrom snipes an overtime winner. A key moment in the Calder Cup playoffs. The Bears proved they could play in the clutch. It's huge to make little adjustments, and whoever can ex execute those better usually comes out on top. So it's a great challenge for us to keep playing our game the right way. We're playing good hockey, but we're never satisfied in that room. There's always chances for us to get better. Well, Fox 43 TV coverage begins in the Eastern Conference Finals with a rough and tumble series between the two oldest franchises in the AHL, the Bears and the Rochester Americans. The Amherst shocked the home team and goalie Hunter Shepard in game one before Shep Daddy and the defense takes over from there. 
Pulled early in a game one loss, Shepard asserts his dominance in net from there against the Amherst. Posts his first shutout of the series in game two to even things up, heading to Rochester. After a game three victory, it's time for the rally in game four. Down two zip with 10 minutes to go. Hershey mounts the furious comeback. Lucas Johansson, Logan Day, and then Mason Morelli. Add an empty netter, and just like that, the Bears are one win from the Calder Cup Finals. A home loss sends the series back to upstate New York for the clincher. With two men in the sin bin, the Bears need the kill. A five on three mad scramble. Guys sacrifice their bodies for the block shots, and Shepard does the rest. Total team effort. Obviously, you're gonna have to make some saves, especially on five on three. But uh, when when you have confidence, you know, 95 or more percent of the time, that if you make the first save, like you got hope. They kill off the penalties and finish the job. Have done it. They're headed to the Calder Cup Finals. As Fish said, to the finals and a trip to the Palm Desert, California against the Firebirds. We forget games one and two. The Bears fall 9-0 in the first two games of Coachella Valley's firepower. But the Bears insist that they were having fun out there. And Coach Todd Nelson looked at Zach Fish and said, it will get better. Hey, they were going home. It was time to roar. And it did get better. Back in the den for game three, Hershey cracks the code for goals. Ethan Frank, that's his first goal of the playoffs for their first lead in the series. This game is wild. Sam Annis makes it a two goal game, but Coachella Valley fires back. They score two late goals to push this one to overtime, and a hockey hero is born in Chocolate Town. Riley Sutter is the hero. As a 20 man group, we played a lot harder, certainly tonight than we did down or down in California. The story in game four, the roar of Mike Vecchioni. He scores two goals in this one. The defense stops a furious attack as Giant Center rocks on its way to a 3-2 victory and an even series at two games apiece. Game five is a scoreless 60 minutes of tight hockey. Someone has to step up and be that man. One is Logan Day as he holds the puck in at the blue line, gets tripped, finds Garrett Pilon. Snipe, light, game winner. Bears take a series lead at three games to two. It got swarmed by all the guys. I mean, it was it was a great feeling. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was it was great. I mean, like, it was crazy. The fans were nuts. It was, it was really surreal, and I probably blacked out for a little. Back to the desert with the game in hand. Game six, it's a loss. One last time to rule. Yeah, everything leads up to one game. Odds stacked against the visitors. Blown out 14 to 2 in the previous three games in Coachella Valley. A calmness surrounds the players and the coaches that morning. A team, now a family, rises to the occasion and completes a season for the ages. He's the Calder Cup playoff MVP for a reason. Already down two zip. A shorthanded breakaway, Hunter Shepard, with perhaps the most important save of the year, keeps the deficit at two. Hershey responds later in the second period. Left side of the net, Connor McMichael all alone. It's now two to one. And it's a slap shot and deflection away from being tied. Vinny Iorio from the point. Hendricks Lapierre redirects, and it's knotted up at two apiece. Sets the stage for Mike Vecchioni in overtime for the only goal of its kind in AHL history. Well, down low, bouncing around, boards from after in front. They score! They score! Mike Vecchioni! The Bears have done it! They are Calder Cup champions! You know, we were talking about how much this team is really bonded together as brothers. You know, there's just the best group of guys you could ask for. And now we're going to be in the rafters at the Giant Center forever, so it's an amazing feeling. All right, give us the roar. Fans flock to the home of the Bears for a watch party. Quite the mix of emotions into the early Thursday morning hours in the Giant Center. We were there when they won in 88, won 12 straight. So this would be right up there with that. If there is one thing Bears fans had in common, they wanted the cup. We're excited. I mean, it's game seven, do or die. Let's go Bears! 
hundreds flocked to Giant Center and the game left fans on the edge of their seat. Go Bears! I'm excited. Let's go Bears! The anxiety was real and at the max at times, but Bears Nation never stopped believing. <laughs> Good to see him finally win again. I I got this puck hat the first night they rose up, they raised that last banner. Awesome! This is so exciting. We watched this team all season, and it's just we knew it was special right from day one. Yeah, go Bears! I have an afternoon shift tomorrow, so I can I get at least a little sleep in. I don't know how I'll sleep tonight though. We won. Fill that cup up with some Hershey's syrup and bring it on back to Chocolate Town. And after Thursday morning win, Bears fans stayed out late at the Giant Center so they could sport their Calder Cup championship gear. This is the merch line at 2 in the morning. Guess the late game start from the time zone didn't help, though. I don't think 7 o'clock start would have changed. These fans are dedicated. It was fun spending all night with them at the Giant Center watching the Bears take home the win. <laughs> And still to come, you can't win the Calder Cup without a huge celebration. to remember for the guys once the game was over the celebrations in the locker room post game were electric and it didn't stop there less than 24 hours after winning the cup the Hershey Bears hopped a flight back to Central PA some with little to no sleep from the excitement I can say the cup made it back safely but not without some residue from adult beverages Four champions back in PA less than 24 hours after the Bears clinched their 12th Calder Cup. Honestly, I, I got to pitch myself. It's it's incredible uh, to do it with this group of guys. To have our families come with us and enjoy it with us. It's surreal right now, and uh, obviously this warm welcome with all these fans. It's. This is why Hershey is the best place to play. Of course, winning in dramatic fashion as time winds down in overtime, the hero, Mike Vecchioni. Once I played like that, it was just complete euphoria. I just shedded everything and got to celebrate with all the boys and everything got emotional. I started crying. It was just an unbelievable feeling. Bears Nation came out to welcome home the chocolate and white. I always want to see that the fans are behind them because, you know, when the Giants Center is packed full, it's, it gets them amped up, it gets them going, and something that they accomplished far away, and they didn't have their home base there, so I want to give them that same excitement when they come home. That's so far away. They didn't have a lot of their fans there, so they should know how much we honestly love them now. Thank you, Nelson! The celebration lasts through the night. Pretty hungover right now, <laughs> but Ben don't break. You just keep partying and just live it up. And the celebration continues. No championship run is complete without a return home to celebrate with the fans. The Hershey Bears faithful riding with this team through thick and thin and relishing in the moment to celebrate with the hometown heroes. Let's go, Bears! A thunderous welcome home for the Calder Cup champions. The fans come out in droves for autograph sessions and take some pictures with the hardware. Of course, that being the Calder Cup, the championship memorabilia loud and proud by the dozens at the Giant Center. The players make sure to thank their loyal and rabbit fan base for their continued support throughout the season. Some fans, longtime supporters and others seeing a championship for the first time. No matter the age, this celebration is one everyone will remember for a very long time. Of course, there's been 13 years in between, so it was definitely important. It's my son's first experience of a Calder Cup win, so we had to come out. You're from Hershey. Fans. It was just sheer excitement. I, I was so happy, so proud. It just it means everything to a season ticket holder. Fan base's strength is never in question with this team as the champions get their just due for the perfect end to the season. 
And coming up in our Sunday sit down, the voice of the Hershey Bears, Zach Fish, stops by to discuss the Chocolate and Whites championship run from historic moments to historic calls. It's all next when the frenzy returns. back to the Bears Calder Cup frenzy. It has been a wild ride for Hershey Bears Nation and in this edition of the Sunday sit down we go back into the den with the voice of the chocolate and white Zach Fish as he reflects on the journey of a Calder Cup championship after the team celebration at Giant Center. Sitting here it's a time to reflect. Celebration is on for you. What did this whole ride mean? You know what? It's uh, really special. It, it means a lot and Today it really sunk in, like uh, being with our fan base and being back here. It's cool to win and celebrate with your brothers and this group that we've been around, but to do it in front of your fans is something I wish we got to do. So to celebrate today was pretty cool. So uh, amazing ride, really soaking in uh, what this meant to this community and to this fan base. And you know the fact that we get to hang another banner up there in the fall is pretty special. And it was great to celebrate it with thousands of people that were here today. It felt like a, felt like a game here at Giant Center. So that was awesome. We listen to you call the game seven goals, and I see you looking up at the board and the fans cheering behind you. As a, the voice of the Bears, what did that mean just to hear them going nuts? And for you, because normally you're calling it, you don't normally get to hear them. Like you get to hear the replay of your voice calling a historic moment. You know what? Uh, for me, it was less about my voice and just more about the run for the guys and what we accomplished and looking back at it. It was cool to have, you know, my audio being the soundtrack of this run. And that kind of sunk in a little bit, like, wow, like, this is going to go down in team history. And I was the one that was yelling a lot, you know, it just that hadn't really been something that I thought about quite yet until you see each and every series and how it progressed. But a lot of great memories, a lot of games that were extremely memorable. And, you know, it's an honor to be that voice that called all of them and just so proud of the group and what we accomplished. 30 years from now, what's the one moment you're going to pull from this? I think there's a couple um, that I'm going to pull from it. It's hard to choose just one. Uh, for me, I think that game five, Garrett Pilon scoring at home, how loud this building was and knowing we were going back to California when a lot of people said we weren't going to do it. That's up there. And then obviously I think just, just winning it and being in the locker room and getting blasted in the face with champagne and alcohol. And that, that was the first time for me, not the goal, not running down there, not lifting the trophy, but being in that locker room, seeing the pure joy on those guys' faces was the first time that I realized, holy cow, Hirsch Bears just won the Calder Cup. I'm like, I'm here now, we did it, we're celebrating, and uh, I'll tell you, my suit coat, it's hanging at home, it needs to go to the dry cleaners, it stinks, it smells like all sorts of champagne and alcohol and sweat and determination, it just, uh, it's, it's something I'll probably never wear again, even if it gets clean, but uh, those are the memories that'll last a lifetime. I think just the crowd, the reaction in this building, and, and today was up there too, pretty special, so it'll be a culmination of things, but uh, you know, I, really being in the room after the fact with those guys, I'll never forget. This footage never gets old. I told Zach, don't get it clean, just frame it. You can hear more with Zach Fish. They call him Shark Around Giant Center over at fox43.com backslash frenzy. So many great moments during this run. The live shot from the after party. Look at the joy on Aaron Ness's face. Will that make the cut? We'll show you our top five when we come back on the Bears Calder Cup Frenzy. Seeing the fans do this, right? The booth cam. This has got to be the most difficult part of the show, Andrew. Reducing an entire Calder Cup playoff run to five of our favorite moments. I, mean, I didn't know it was time to roar right there with the, with the rally towel. Yeah, that's impossible. Logan Day's jersey marathon wearing the cup in the aisle on the plane just in front of me. They did not make it. Neither did the Firebirds announcer thanking their fans for a great season after game two. <laughs> the disrespect. Seriously, it happened. Now, certain details we can share, some we can't. The night after the game seven win, sleep is optional. This is our live shot for the 5 a.m. morning news on Thursday. The team fresh out of the pool at the Courtyard Marriott and they take over the lobby area and our live shot. Aaron Ness, Connor McMichael hoist the trophy behind us. 30 minutes total of shut eye for me that night. Suffice to say, a good time had by all. I can't begin to imagine how many adult beverages have been celebrated out of the Calder Cup. 
Eh, why not a few more? A few Hershey Bears players stopped by Trogues on Friday and of course brought the cup to have a few local beers out of it. It started by Trogues saying they don't use outside cups, but would make an exception if the Bears stopped by. That looks like fun. The Calder Cup playoffs were a long and fun road for Fox 43. None of it possible without our producer Ed Albert. Deserves a huge shout out for all of his hard work. Only fitting he gets to share a moment with the Cup and have some fun axe throwing as well. He also catches a surreal moment with Alexi Protus as well. FaceTiming his family on the ice after the big win. Ed huge in every broadcast and every moment. A huge thanks for his services. Ed also beat John Walton bowling, by the way. Speak it into destiny. That is what Cade Helmer, son of Bears VP of Operations, Brian Helmer, told me. This is Cade when he was with the Junior Bears, wearing 20 as an alternate captain. Years later, he sits in for Aaron Ness, who wears 20 and is the alternate captain for the team's championship photo. Yeah, Ness couldn't be there because he had a family thing to tend to. And there is the Photoshop result as Nesser. Got to tell you, I love it. Tell me that again, Sam, and, and introduce your fiance and what's happening here. This is my fiance, Grace. We're getting married in 10 days. This is the first of two rings this summer. We finish with a Calder Cup love story. We go to interview Sam Annis about the epic Game 7 win. First thing he tells us, he's getting married. Happy to report the playoff run has not interrupted wedding plans. It did, however, squash the bachelor party. A Calder Cup championship fills the void nicely. What a ride, what a moment. Bears Nation, we know you won't forget this for a long, long time. We thank you for allowing us to be just a small part of it. As Mike Vecchioni says, first they hear it, now they fear it, or FTFR, we keep it clean. And a huge thank you to all the people here at Fox 43 that helped make our coverage possible. Obviously, thanks to the Bears and all the wins and taking us on an unforgettable ride. For Andrew, Ed Albert, Lindsey, Evan, and Alex, I'm Todd Sadowski. Thanks for watching this special Hershey Bears Calder Cup Frenzy. We'll see you next time. One last thing to do. Three, two, one. Right.